everyone, my name is Iris France. 我叫李婉如 Today we're going to continue to talk about buying and selling, and I'm using Barron's book, Chapter Nine, Figure Nine Point Five, and I'm going to show you how I derived the offer curve. So if you remember, offer curve traces the bundle X1 and X2 that we're going to consume given different income or different prices. And here we're given an endowment, omega one and omega two. Now suppose the price of good one and good two are P one star and P two star respectively. Now suppose when the price is like that, I am happy with my bundle and I don't want to trade. So what happens if we fix the price of good two? So we fix P two at P two star. We're not going to change it. The only thing we're going to change is P one star. Then what would happen to our final consumption bundle given that we're changing the price of good one? So suppose the price of good one goes down. So P one is lower than P one star. That is our original price. Whereas the price of good two doesn't change. Well, in that case, because the price of good one has gone down, so it makes sense for you to buy more good one. And it makes sense for you to sell your good two because now the price of good two is relatively higher than before. So we're talking about relative price, and、uh, you are going to consume a bundle where you have more good one and you have less good two. So your new bundle is X one prime and X two prime. Notice that your X one prime is higher than your omega one, meaning your net buyer of good one. Well, because the price of good one has gone down, so it makes sense for you to buy more. And at the same time, your consumption bundle has a less X two, so your X two is less than omega two, meaning you are selling your good two. Why? Because the price of good two is relatively higher than before, and therefore it makes sense for you to sell your good two. Now, what happens if the price of good one goes up, so that now your P one is higher than P one star? Well, in that case, that means the price of good one has gone up, so it makes sense for you to sell it. And at the same time, relatively, the price of good two has gone down, so it makes sense for you to buy it. And therefore, you can see the new、um, budget line is this red line. Notice that it still goes through your original endowment. It's just steeper. Why? Because P one is now relatively higher than.、Um, The previous price, P one star, so the budget line becomes steeper, and this is your new consumption bundle. You have less good one, and you have more good two. So eventually, given different prices that goes through this endowment, you are going to have different consumption bundles. Now, if you trace all the consumption bundles, you are going to get this pink line, and that is our offer curve. So at the end of the day, you are able to change not just P one but also P two. But notice that the only thing that's relevant really is the relative price. So suppose your price of good one is one and price of good two is two. Now if the price of both goes doubled, so now、uh, the price of good one is now two, the price of good two is now four. Then guess what? You're going to stand on the exactly the same budget line. Because it has to go through your consumption bundle, and the only thing matters really is just the slope of your budget line. So I hope this helps, and you know how I get the offer curve. And next time we're going to talk about how to get our demand curve using the offer curve. I hope this helps, and good luck with your studying.